gathered together for the occasion were a group of Purina officials, including Mr. Donald Denver, president of the Ralston Purina Company. And next to him is Mr. Matt Seekhouse, Purina's pioneer St. Louis mill manager, now retired, who's on hand to represent the early days. Mr. Harry Colwell, present mill manager, is signaling Mr. Danforth that the 49,999,999 ,999 ton of Purina Chows is almost completed. There's the signal, and there starts Purina's 50 million ton as Mr. Danforth and Mr. Seekhouse take over the sewing of the special bags. With Purina's 50 million ton, one era of progress ends and another starts. Speaking of progress, Matt Seekhouse could talk for hours about the changes in the feed manufacturing process since the first ton of Purina child was made more than 60 years ago. When he started making Purina chows, the latest mixing machinery was a scoop shovel and plenty of elbow grease. That's a far cry from today's modern push button mill turning out hundreds of thousands of tons of poultry and livestock feeds each month. This growth is a tribute to you farm folks who are constantly accepting new and more efficient ways of producing the meat, milk, and eggs needed to feed our growing population. So all the people at Checkerboard Square, as well as that neighbor of yours, your hometown Purian dealer with a checkerboard sign, say thanks a million for the 50 million tons. Good news, wasn't it, Carl? It sure was, And say, Minnie. Carl, did you know that Buddy Epson sings real good, too, or is that news to you? No, it's not news to me. I eat sings real good. Well, he's over there talking to Chet Atkins. Let's go over there and get him to All sing. right, let's go run on over. <laughs> hey, Buddy, have you got over your episode with David Crewcut yet? I'll never get over that. <laughs> singing a song for us, buddy. Well, I'd love to, Benny. Why don't you kids sit here and I'll give you a word of fatherly advice, especially you, young man. When you travel down the trail of life, always beware of one thing, a stranger with a deck of cards. I stepped aboard a river boat bound for New Orleans, and there I met a man who seemed to be a man of means. We got into a friendly game. At first, I won a lot. But somehow, when the stakes got high, he always took the punt with a wild card. He had a wild card. The luckiest man I ever saw drew a wild card every draw. We drifted by St. Louis. I was hoping we would land. Before I get through hoping, he had dealt another hand. I had a pair of aces, so of course I bet my stack. But when he called my hand, that man had aces back to back plus a wild card. He had a wild card. And every buck I never saw such a dog on luck. We went ashore at Memphis just to take a little stroll. I didn't feel too bad because I still had half my roll. The boat pulled out for Natchez and my luck was running great until I saw him make one draw and fill an inside straight with a wild card. He had a wild card. I just had no luck at all with this Gaylord Rabbit. I told him that he cleaned me out all my ready cash. He got up like a gentleman and twirled his mustache. He had me meet a lady friend, and from the way she looked, before that boat passed past Rouge, I knew that I'd been hooked by a wild card. She was a wild card. The way she played her little game made those other cards look tame. She took me to the railing, and the moon was big and high. I we only kissed, and then I missed a stick pin from my tie. I watched what next to then my ring, and brother, it's the truth. I didn't worry till I lost my golden pivot to that wild card. She was a wild card. This little lady known as Lou took the car fare from my shoe. We docked at New Orleans when they put the gangway down. The pair of them walked off that boat just like they owned the town. He wore my ring and stick pin, and as if I needed proof, I dangled from his watch chain with my golden pivot to She was his wild card, his wicked wild card. Now the moral of the story is beware. When you're traveling, stick to silence. You know, I'm getting with this opera here. Oh, well, cool. what can we do for you, buddy? Well, you know, I have always known that one of the mainstays of the opera was a sacred or religious song, and I wish you'd sing one for us. Yes. It sure is, and I'd like to do one for you. I dreamt 